So everyone's here. We're about to take off. Make sure your seat back tray tables are in their upright and locked position. And the chance my seminar really goes badly. Everything goes afoul. Unfortunately, oxygen masks will not be coming down from the ceiling, but there are exits towards the rear of the auditorium. Okay, I'll serious this. Thanks for coming to my seminar. It's called Sit Down, Shut Up, and Enjoy the Music. My name's Stephen Rock, and I'm with enjoythemusic.com, audiophile magazine online, reviews, show reports, etc. Some of you may be familiar with that. Um, basically, all the technical stuff you've been hearing the past couple days, probably integration with computers, NAS drives, even what I'm doing here, this seminar is not about any of that. I've done those seminars, been there, done that, saw the book, read the movie. How many people have, let's say, more than 10 years of being an official audiophile? Raise your hand. So actually, most of you. OK, how many, said in politely, but how many newbies do we have? It's a couple years. OK, only three or four. Good. The newbies will learn something and maybe avoid some of the pitfalls and whatnot. Some of this is, I will admit, a little bit vain, because it'll discuss some of my experiences. Uh, my basic background is, first job I had, I worked for Heath Kit Electronics. Um, some of you old timers probably remember, they're the ones who made all the tube kits and all that. That was my first real job, but I learned to solder at age five. So you could say mm, audio files since eight or nine that had tannoy dual concentric gold monitors, which back then were new. Now they're legendary speakers. And slowly my trip through audio file land ebbed and flowed, and then I did the solid state thing, and the tube thing, and the horn thing, and the big speaker thing, and the huge infinity. I'm sure I see a lot of smiling faces that some people seem to have, we've ebbed and flowed through probably more than our fair share of equipment, a lot of us. Um, at some point you probably were reading a magazine and, you know, wow, even more transparent. Let's see. Oh, depth of field. Wow. Precise imaging, soundscaping. And it's, it's almost kind of like an addiction. You know, no, seriously. OK, now, now here's the, the if, and, and I'll, I'll admit it. How many of us have done the tone cone, anti-vibration tuning? OK. You're chasing after, and which is which is cool, and it does make a difference. Just like I definitely agree, cables do. Don't get me going on a cables argument, but it's 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 almost like for me one of the first. I remember one of my first experiences of really just being awed. Besides um, seeing eighteen twelve played live by the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, where they just happen to use live blasting caps for the cannons, and that gets a young kid's attention at the age of six. But uh, when Dad was playing pipe organ music, as well as when I was, first time I heard headphones, which were the old costs, and I'm like, it's, it's kind of like, I don't know if I should say this here, it's kind of like drugs. You know, you get the first hit, and you're like, whoa, and chasing it ever since. In some ways, audio is the same way. In some ways, it's not, because it does get better. Um, besides, you know, we went from vinyl, which is awesome, and CD, which I'll say it flat out. In the beginning, CD sucked. But it got better. And it's pretty good. And now we have, of course, SACD. We have 24, 192 streams. The point, really, of this seminar is there comes a point. And for me, I hit that wall years ago. And I've kind of hit it again, which is why you don't see me personally reviewing much gear. How many of you, at one point, had a sound system you were just really happy with? It just kind of made you tap and dance. And then for some foolish reason, you upgraded and sold something. And now in the back of your mind, you kind of wish you had maybe a piece again. OK, no. And, and what would, I wish we had a portable mic. And what was that piece of gear? It was uh, the Soul Superfly by Zoo. OK, so Zoo Audio? Yeah. Soul Superfly. And why did you get rid of it? Uh, so they sat off to the side, and I got mad, and I sold them. So you say we, and you have this gentleman next to you who? Who is my favorite husband of 30 years. 
your favorite husband of 30 years foolishly sold your favorite speaker. No, dude, it's cool, because I've been, I'm a speaker. My dad's the same way. My, my dad, he has, I literally have probably 15 pairs of speakers at home. I've eclipsed my dad. That's probably not a proud thing to admit in public and on video, but. <sighs> okay, and there was another hand up of something that you sold, and yes, sir. It was a well-tempered turntable, one of the original ones. One of the original well-tempered. Nice. So why? Why did you get rid of it? Oh, I was moving, so I didn't so, want to ship it. <laughs> so just because you, okay, did you have a pair of speakers you shipped? Uh, Pro Acne Towers. Aren't those kind of bigger? Uh, heavier. Not this thing. <laughs> heavier. Well, okay. But, but for some you, reason. Yeah, it was just that fluid in there. It's like, well, what do you do with it? Uh, so if one came up on some sales site, would you like buy it back? I just bought a TW Acoustic Raven. So. Uh, so you went and you upgraded. Now, for me, um, the last experience I had where I, I used to have three turntables. Yeah, I liked vinyl, 8,000 records. And anyway, so I had different ones, and I was reviewing the truly excellent Clear Audio. I don't know how many of you in the vinyl, but a Clear Audio Insider and Stradivari cartridge, which both are tremendous, excellent cartridges. Excellent resolution, excellent sound stage, and all that. But a couple other audio guys were like, Steve, you really need to try a Van der Hole Frog. Now, keep in mind, a Stradivari thinks like five, six grand, and the insider's like $8,000 cartridge. Yeah, I'm hardcore. And the frog, I think, is like, what, two, three grand. And I'm like, well, nah, nah. but everyone said, ever you should own, it's kind of like if you're a car guy and you're a driver, they say you should own a Ferrari once in your life. Just, well, it was, I guess it was the same with vinyl. You should have a Van der Hole frog at least once in your life. And I'm like, well, okay. So I'm in Germany, and I get the Van der Hole frog cartridge, take it home, and I set it up. And I, of course, do all the tweaking, get out the caliper. Because let's face it, we're audiophiles. We want to make sure it's tweaked just right and the arm's just right. And, the, and I put it on, and okay, a couple little tweaking after a few records. Okay, it didn't have the ultimate resolution of the clear audio, I admit it. It didn't have the ultimate, but holy, <clears throat> I don't want to say those words, but um, I put on funk, I put on jazz, it just, it played music. It just was this endless, like I played before we, okay, this is not high resolution. If I told you that was a compressed MP3, you'd probably be like, mm, which it was. But it was something about the music. And for those who didn't hear the beginning, those on video, it was Spyro Gyro Morning Dance. Um, it's about the music and enjoying it. OK, you know, we get lost up in the numbers in the 2496 and the 384, 32-bit and the distortion and the feedback and the, uses these silver wired handmade by a Vestal Virgin or a guy with a pointy hat with silver moon and stars and it's, and like Cuban cigars, it's only ro you know, rolled on a virgin's thigh. And we do love that and it is cool. I mean, because part of it is sell the sizzle, not the steak. I mean, let's, let's not cut what, this, we are in a business here. But at the same time, for me, there's a reason why I called it enjoy the music and not something else. Um, and that harks back to my little brother who passed away and said, enjoy life, you never know. And, and everyone had catchphrases, and that's when I came up with enjoy. And that's really what it's about, is enjoying the music. You know, at some point, and manufacturers probably might not like me saying this, but stop the upgrade-itis. I mean, it, it, there is better stuff that does come out, and it really can make a difference, and that's cool. If you have CD and you, you've got an older DAC, yes, the newer stuff that is very reasonably priced, I would fathom this age probably a lot better, unless you have the old Philips Four Times uh, DAC, but very few people know about that one um, for CD. But anyway, um, you know, how many of you have been to the point where your system was so good, it was so transparent? I mean. You could hear the violinist in the second row on the left. You, you could hear her breathe a little just before she. How many of you have, have been at that stage where your system could do that? And because it was so transparent, 
what percentage of now your music collection became unlistenable? Yeah, a lot. A lot. Now, there's music that you love, and there's a reason why you have your collection, right? I mean, you didn't just go out and spend money for stuff you hate. Is it now? In a sense, in a Zen manner, is it really progress that your system is so transparent you've just alienated, what, 25, 50? How much percentage? 50. 50. He, he, is it so good that you alienated 50% of the music you love? Is it that important? I'm not, I'm not coming down on you hard, but I've been there. Um, way back when I had, what was it, a cello EQ? I know, I, I'm an equalizer, sorry. Um, and all that, and I ha even did live and dead end. I mean, I forget about wife acceptance factor, of course, you know, I was single, obviously. <laughs> and, and it was so transparent. And I had the, the Theta Data 2 laser disc player and the data, this is, we're going back, what, 15 years, 12 years ago. And when I would try to watch movies, it's like you could actually hear any time they did an audio dub from the live whatever to then going into the studio, into the booth, because obviously it sounds like this, and then it sounds like this, and now we're going to this scene, and oh, I thought I would go ahead and do it. And I could so hear the difference. It made some movies unwatchable because I could hear so much of the differences. I'm not necessarily trying to say that's always a bad thing, but I did hit a wall where it was so transparent that I alienated some music I loved. And this gets back to like the Van der Hall Frog story. It brought back, I found myself. How many of you have ever like got a piece of gear and it, it just seemed to do something so right you find yourself just naturally, almost just gyrating to your jazz collection or certain other things you hadn't heard in a while and it's like you're hearing it again for your first time. How many of you have been through that experience? Almost everyone. So again, it's again not like getting new gear is bad, but when, for me, I, I realized, you know, at some point I took a wrong turn in this whole transparency, ultimate thing when I'm alienating so much of the music I love. I mean, that to me, as a musician and audiophile and whatever label you want to put on reviewer, and that's what I'd like to see everyone kind of get back to is if you're stuck where I was or you're getting there, you know, sometimes maybe take a few steps back. It's, it's not really, maybe I shouldn't say back because backwards generally is considered negative. It's, get the phone, it's, it's generally, um, it's okay, I left my ringer on too, I just realized it, so. Um, you know, it's, it's more like, okay, Recently for me, it's I've been to, if, how many of you have, are going to admit in public to actually reading something I wrote or have written? Wow, I'm sorry. I can only apologize so much. But um, basically, I don't know if you've read recently that, okay, I did the avant-garde horns, I did the tubes, I had it, and it's all awesome. I mean, I had a great time, and I don't regret any of it. But... I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to totally, I moved. I moved to this, it's an awesome room. Um, and I said, you know, I want to do something different. So I said, okay, at some point in my life, I decided to go single-ended and efficient. I gave up on the, and I had the infinity betas, remember the four big towers, and I had, you don't want to know how much power, I had the VTL-225. I mean, those things, you need power for those. And it was awesome, but then I somehow, well, I decided to kind of go backwards. And as a reviewer, I mean, let's admit it, I call up, I can get a piece of gear. But I'm not quite like that personally, so I said, okay, what is it over the years that I, just, that I found I really liked? And I thought, you know, the old Dunleavy speakers. Now, bless his soul, he's passed away, John Dunleavy. But... Um, so I went online and I found a pair of Dunleavy's and I got them and I have to tell you, even though they're old, they're not under warranty, they're amazing. It's kind of, I had to go back. There's, there's progress and then there's going back. And it's just kind of, in audio file land, the ebbing and flowing. Um, you know, again, seeking to enjoy the music. Um, but let me get more to the music itself, because now we've done equipment, equipment, equipment is what I've been talking about. Um, 
like you, sir, favorite musical artists? Favorite musical artists uh, today? I still like to uh, listen to things like uh, Toto, uh, you know, kind of smooth jazz stuff, uh, Remington's, uh, Alex Parker Jr., which we were playing before, Steely Dan. I like some of the new stuff, too. I mean, all the way up from Lady Gaga and Matt Sound. So I'm all over the board. So you're all over the board. And what equipment do you use to reproduce that? Well, I've uh, lost some of them rebuilding my life. I can tell you that out loud, so that's OK. OK. And years ago, I used to have all SAE equipment. Wow, the old SAE gear. Yeah, 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 so I was the AR9 Towers. Uh, today, I'm uh, rebuilding up. I have Sonus Bobber, nice. Center Channel, uh, the toys. And until I get separates, I run up through an NAD receiver uh, with a clutch uh, subwoofer. So that's nice. kind of where I'm at at the moment. And who else listens to the same jazz, Spyrogyra, Ripping Tins, and whatnot? Um, gentlemen in the back, I don't want to, but speak up because unfortunately we don't have a mic to hand you. So you listen to the same music. Now, what equipment do you use to hear that same music? Usher speakers, Class A. Usher, Usher audio, audio speakers, class, set, class A. Class A. Yeah. Um, Hans, turntable. Cool. And a music server. And a music server. Cool, so you've done the music server thing. Awesome. So basically, we have two guys who like the same, mu same music, but have chosen different paths. OK. Um, and that's, that's what I love, is that even with musicians, um, listen to Miles Davis and how he plays his trumpet. And I don't believe anyone in this room is going to go, eh, Miles. But then you listen to like, Marsalis or some other trumpeters, and different trumpeters will use a different trumpet to achieve their goal. It doesn't mean their music's any less viable and what they love. And me being a drummer, any drummers in the audience or percussionists? Or, so you probably, how many snare drums do you dare to admit to owning? Uh, You've none? You had a bunch. OK, come on, come clean. How many is a bunch of snare drums? He had six snare drums. Now, one guy, one drum set, but you have six snare drums. I equate this to kind of audiophile land, where it's like, um, you know, how many speakers again did you own? At one time? At one time? A dozen. A dozen. But see, that's the great thing, is we have choice. And it's, it's, it's almost like cooking and spices. You know, certain music, you may say, I like this speaker or this setup or certain other music. But the point is, A, thank goodness for this industry that we have this choice. And that we can sit back and we enjoy our music. And we just have fun with our music collection and the streaming servers that even gives you more choice that's easy instead of hunting through your vinyl. Um, I'm trying to figure out where to go here. Does anyone have any questions? I should at least briefly ask for some questions. I'll do that early on. Did anybody have any specific questions for me or anything else along the lines of, oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm caught in a trap with Audioville or anything else? And I'll briefly get to that, and then we'll go back to questions later. Any questions? Yes, sir. How are people solving the problem of having your audio equipment come up to a certain level of fidelity? but the music sources aren't there to really be able to appreciate it. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Okay. How are people you know, working through that? So you're saying your equipment's great, but the music source itself? Exactly. Um, that is interesting, because you're right. The, remember I said earlier, like, CD, it came out, and that was a newfangled thing. And now we've got, I mean, you can just go online, download 24, 192 from, like, HD tracks or whatnot. That is the interesting thing. How many of you have been in a recording studio or heard truly a live recording studio playback? How did that sound compared to, say, your home system? Oh, it sounded wonderful when I heard. So, so in other words, it's a totally different system. But, and, and, and that's kind of what you brought up, is that here you have a true master tape sound, yet, and our equipment's probably capable of doing it, but the source, what happens from the master tape to the CD or even 24 192. I used to go to the studio. I used to tour as well and stuff. Um, that is an excellent question. And do we ever know what we're really getting? Do we, as, unless you actually have the mass, somebody actually did a master tape, do you really know if you're getting the master tape out? 
Now, in defense of the new stuff with Chesky Records or HD Tracks, they're recording at like 24, 192, and literally you are getting now a, almost pretty much really a one-to-one. -one. So we are now finally reaching that, but does that mean that when you're able to master it, what is it, 384, 32-bit, that won't be even more better? I mean, CD was perfect sound forever, wasn't it? Come on, wasn't it? Perfect sound forever, digital ready speakers. Remember that, digital ready. Uh, I think things have gotten better. But, and, and you're right, it's like, at what, our gear is probably so good, do we keep upgrading it, Hope and the sources are still playing catch up? Um, there is a theory where, get your source right. Um, I'm trying to remember if it was Lynn or Creek or some British manufacturer. Does anyone remember which one? So it was Lynn. So you get your source right and everything will go. And that is true to some extent because even these little Oppo players, does anybody have like a, I mean they're what, three, four hundred bucks? Anyone have an Oppo? What, like what, four or five hundred bucks, three hundred bucks? Did you have a DAC unit a few years back that probably cost you five times the price? And this little Oppo that costs how much? 300 bucks. And it beat your how much front end from years ago? A lot more. Okay. So, and, and that is it. Is, is part of it is the source, part of it's the equipment. I'm, I'm trying to, so it's really, it is a combination because you can have the ultimate source, but if you're playing it, it as far as the ultimate source file, this is like why we've been able to hear more and more from CD, the equipment also in the front end is caught up. Um, you know, it's, I almost want to say it's kind of like the cat chasing the tail. And some magazines, well, well, okay, I'll shoot myself in the foot, including mine. Why not? Hey, I'm as guilty as anyone else. You always read about more of this and more of that. It's tantalizing. It's the sizzle. And I talked about that earlier. And it sometimes has you chasing this stuff. And it's like, sometimes I wonder, do the ends justify the means? Is, is, is all the energy extracted, is it really worth it? I, I used to race cars, and I don't want to tell you how much hours we put into engineering time and tweaking that literally a thousandth of an inch, you know, a hundredth of an inch would be huge as far as certain adjustments on the car, but it would make a difference on the track. So there was actual measurable difference. But we're talking a super minute fraction. At some point, you have to say, is it worth it for me to enjoy music more? For some of us, guilty as charged. It is. It's, it's I want to be able to, to get that little more. I want to be able to hear maybe just that extra rasp when Miles Davis is, you know, or whatnot. Um, is anybody right now caught into the, I would call it burnout phase, or, or has burnt out at some point? Okay, when was it that you burnt out? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I wanted to hear you flesh out a little bit. You said you arrived at the set in high efficiency. Okay. Kind of settling in on that. Oh, okay. That's what happened to me after meandering through a lot of mostly tube stuff. I wound up with horns and, and single in the triad. Okay. And, then, and that's basically where I've stayed. Okay. And, and for me, it was awesome. I had the. He wants me to flesh out more about the, my horns and tube stuff, so I'll do that briefly. Um, basically, I started with the VTL 225 behemoths, which were awesome. I had KEF 104 2s live and dead in room. Um, then before there was a thing called single-ended audio that most Americans knew about. It, it was a little bit in Europe. My brother passed away, and basically he was a brilliant guy and did well in life. And, um, I called up the U.S. Audio Note guy, and I wanted to buy the Roto. It was like a $3,000, whatever. <sighs> okay, I'll admit this in public. So I call up the distributor in America to try and get a $3,000 product, and I'm talking to him. I really like the Angaku, but and he goes, just so happens I have one. Da -da -da. Must be the ultimate salesman guy, because he talked me up from a 3,000 piece of gear to one that was, I think, $62,000. I am not kidding you. And yes, I got it. <laughs> Uh, before most, most reviewers, some have heard the Angaku, and they did, uh, I'm probably the only one that, to the best of my knowledge, I'm the only reviewer I know that actually has owned an audio note Angaku. 
And I almost bought the new one too. But, um, and still with the caps and it sounded great. Then I went to, I believe, the avant-garde Unos and awesome. If, how many people here have heard the avant-garde horn speakers? Oh, quite a few. What do you think? Yeah. I'm seeing heads. Awesome. And I went to the duos because they fleshed out more of the lower end. So I reviewed, if you look, you'll go online, you say I reviewed the Unos, then I reviewed the duos. And I stayed with that setup. And then, then actually, no, um, enjoythemusic.com. I, I skipped a bit. I was early.com, and let's say I'm, I, I put a lot of money into the site, and let's just say financially. Um, Sometimes in life, and in this economy, actually, this is going back many years, but in today's economy, some of us have enemy card decisions of either I have faith in a dream and I need to sell. And the Angaku found a new owner, we'll call it that way. And Enjoy the Music stayed online. That was my choice. And then I wound up getting wavelength uh, audio, the Cardinals. Uh, actually, some of the early models that Gordon Rankin, which a lot of you know Gordon Rankin makes two amps, but his recent fame is his awesome digital stuff. So I had the Cardinals um, with the Unos and Duos, and it was a great sound. I mean, that combination, uh, awesome. I mean, I would have people come over, and that's the other thing. We need to bring more blood and life and people into this who also love music. I mean, nowadays, we can say what we want about Apple and whatever, which is positive, negative, but let's admit it. He has rebirthed the kids, the people, getting back in touch and just loving music. Sound quality wise, okay, an iPod with 128 kilobyte or 320. But bring them in. And I would bring people into my room and I would have them, I would just try to see what my neighbors, what other people, what their reaction was. And I did this over the years now and then, is bring people in because I just was curious to what they thought I was doing little experiments. Um, if you really want to blow their mind, put on Roger Waters' Amused to Death. You guys are familiar with that? Because it's hard for people to realize Amused to Death has Q sound which has um, imaging and everything all over, even though it's two speakers and it blows people's mind. Uh, that's basically where I ended up when I finished up with tubes, um, pretty much. I mean, there was some other stuff I got, but I don't want to spend overly amount of time because I can see people going. Um, any other questions or people want me to discuss more on any certain topics? I'm, I'm trying to keep this light and brief. I don't know if you want me to go more. I'm one guy, but my point basically with the seminar, and I am keeping it short and sweet, I know I have a full hour, but how many of you guys are eager to just get the hell out of here and get out there and hear a lot of gear and music? No, come on, admit it. I, I, don't take, I really don't take this. See, that's the other thing is I don't take this personally. I'm, I'm an audio press guy who, you know, when all else fails, if somebody insults you because of a piece of gear, that's the other thing. Don't take it personally. So I'm going to pretty much wrap this up. It's only a half hour, and that's cool. You do have a question in the back. Yeah, and it's sort of framed with an experience that I've had, which is I've been an audiophile for over 30 years. Been an audiophile for over 30 years, experience with an iPad. Humble beginnings with a pair of Magnavan MG1s. Nice. Magnavan's. If I could go back in time, I enjoyed music so much back in those days. They weren't the highest resolution, but they were So now you own an $80,000 pair of speakers from, Mag from the Maggies? Uh, not from Maggies. Oh. Um, they're, they're a pair of carbons. Oh, OK. Um, but um, I also own those audio engines and get so much enjoyment out of $349. <laughs> so you own these $349 audio engine speakers, which, by the way, I own two pair. I'm wondering, is that a, a consistent experience with your sort of travels, that you get sort of to the top, you realize that there is no grail. That the emperor, so you're saying there is no grail, the emperor has no clothes? Okay. I, I made it. No, it's cool. It took me 30 years to figure that out, finally just relax. So it took you 30 years. Yeah. Oh my god. And now I'm able to relax and say, you know what, $349, that's a lot of good music. Maybe it's not the, la the last word in detail or right. imaging or whatever else but they produce great music, and I enjoy them a lot. Just 
limping along in the morning and you know getting back to why I got into it in the first place. And, and I'm wondering if have you had that experience as well, given your access to yes. that. Uh, yes, I have. I was one of the first people. So, so you went from some humble Maggies, which were awesome speakers, to eventually to $80,000 speakers. And now you're finding, after over the 30-year experience, because you don't know, have a mic, that you're loving these $349 audio engines. Have I had that experience? Did I, did I mention I own two pair of them? Yeah. Not one, two. I have one pair in the bathroom. And I have one pair in the bedroom. I'm very picky about my bedroom speakers, and I'm not going there in this seminar. That's, that's a different um, industry I, under a different name that I use. I'm not joking. But anyway, um, but no, I definitely have been there and done that. And that is, in a sense, a perfect way to end the seminar. More money is not always better. The point is to enjoy the music. And yes, I am very serious. These little $349 speakers, God, I almost feel like we're promoing, but they do so much right. It's like you're able to forget, which goes back to the Van Hole Frog. It did so much right. OK, if I did the, analo did the analyzing thing, and the, the, which there are plenty of seminars. If you want to talk about come to a seminar and the analyzing and doing this and guys will show you charts and they'll show you reasons why this and the specs and the jitter spectrum and how we analyze. Frankly, my dear, in the end, does it, am I really going to enjoy the music more or is this an exercise, a uh, masturbatory, sorry and all, exercise in, so when you go out there today, hopefully you brought some of your own music and when you listen, how about you turn off that audio file thing that we've kind of been programmed to, you know, like you, have, you must eat your vegetables and, you know, sit down and sit up straight and all that good stuff that we, and, and how about instead of that, just put it on and if you could just kind of lay back and close your eyes and when I was playing the Spyrojama audio, I saw you, sir, just you kind of close your eyes and you're like, the music's just flowing off this piece of junk little MP3 thing, although this is a state-of-the-art HTC jet stream. Um, just came out, but anyway, and for so this whole setup probably runs you twelve hundred bucks, and you were sitting there and just enjoying the music, and that's the whole point. I'm ending it there. The whole point is to enjoy the music. So get out there, have some fun, and uh, enjoy the music. No, no, this is the new Jetstream. It uh, it's all the latest and greatest stuff that uh, you can throw into a tablet. God. <laughs>